Hello and welcome to another color grading tutorial but today is a little bit different we are not color grading an s log 3 footage we are color grading a footage that is taken from a smartphone this here is a shot taken in my room with my own smartphone and i'm going to color grade it to make it look more cinematic and more presentable as a whole so first things first this shot is a little too wide because i do not want to show the actual light that is falling on my face so let's first try to zoom it in so that this particular light is not visible so i think this much zoom in is perfectly fine and I, uh, what a smile i mean okay now moving on to the actual color page of davinci resolve and i'm not going to use any lut in this i'm going to make everything from scratch so here we have it and i'm going to create a few nodes with some labels something like four nodes here and then i'm going to create another node i'm going to create another node here and i'm hitting alt plus s to create a serial node and alt plus p to create parallel nodes and this is how we're going to go i'll create a few more serial nodes over here and let's get started so first things first uh first node is called denoise there's something optional like this shot does not have much noise but i'm just going to keep it there second one is what i called exposure or xp third one is called white balance this is where i create the white balance fourth one i can call it look or grade this is where the main look of the video is uh, actually created the color palette or whatever this one is soft slash sharp if i want to sh sharpen the video i do it here if i want to soften the video i do it here as well this one will be vignette this one will be gradient and this one will be subject but i don't want to use any lut i want to do everything from the ground up so I will just keep it for blur. I'll keep one for glow. I'll keep one for grain. And I will also keep one extra over here. If I just find something out, I'm not sure. And actually before these three, I want to create something else. So I'll hit shift S to create a serial node before the node that is selected. I just want to keep something called density. Then I will create another node and it will be called uh, qualifier right and then i'll create another node over here and i'll name that skin just for the skin tones perfect uh, now let's get started with the exposure i think this shot could be underexposed a little bit i mean it is overexposed uh, i can bring down the exposure just a little bit so i'm going to get into the primary wheels i'm going to bring down the offset so that we have a little more darkness in the background uh, i think the gain can increase just a little bit the lifts are perfectly fine where they are. The gamma can probably uplift a little bit. The lift can go down probably. Cool. That looks better. This is what we started with. This is where we are at. We have instantly a little more contrast in the shot. Next, we go on to white balance. Now, one very good tip to white balance things uh, without thinking too much is to find a white surface like this t-shirt is sort of white. Actually, this is a little off white. But this table is actually white. So all I need to do is to take this color picker tool and click on some white surface, something that is actually white in real life. So I click that and this is more of a neutral look of how it actually looked. Perfect. Uh, but I don't like how cold this shot is. I will increase the temperature just a little bit over here. Uh, I think that much is fine. The tint also needs to come back. It's slightly here i'm basically eyeballing things like uh, whatever looks good to my eye i'm just sticking to that this blue is a little too harsh we're going to fix that later on but i'm coming to the grade coming to the grade i'm going to create a little bit of uh, a, a variation of teal and orange i'm going to keep the teal part definitely something like teal or turquoise but in the highlights part i generally want to go with orange but with a slight tint of green Let's see how we're going to do that. So first things first, I'm going to go into the uh, curves and come into hue versus saturation. I'm going to add all of these things. Uh, I'm going to move this green marker, which does not make any difference because there is no green in this shot except this plant. But I'm going to move it downwards and move the blue a little bit upward. You'll see the blue color in the shot changing. It will change towards a more tealish color, which is exactly what we want because we're going for a variation of the orange and teal look. That is what we have. We're going to push the yellow upward. You'll see the skin color changing. It will move towards more towards red. Now to now this looks a little too red probably. To fix that, we're going to bring the red down. And so we end up at a perfect orange. 
that looks good the our skin tone got kind of dulled a little bit in this process so what you're gonna do is to go into hue versus uh, uh, luma and uh, get our oranges a little pushed up that will make our skin a little less saturated and a little more bright I think that much is good. If you do it too much, it looks unnatural and uh, looks lifeless. So I'll keep it that far. We are already a fair way through. This is what we started with. This is where we add. Perfect. Um, now, in the grade only, I will add a little bit of green to the highlights. How will I do that? I will use the gain wheel and add a little bit of green from here. Not too much. I think that much should be just fine. And reduce the blue a little bit. I think these are the good, very good values for now. Again, this is where we started with. This is where we're at. Looks pretty fucking good. Next, in the sharpness or softness. Now, generally, when you're shooting with a phone, they try to emulate very sharp edges, which is not really a very filmic or very cinematic look. Cinema generally has softer edges. So I'm going to add a little bit of blur to this. Where is the blur menu? This is a blur menu. I'm going to come here and increase it just a little bit, like not too much like something like 54 55 should be good i'll zoom in a little bit so you can see okay this is where we are starting with you can see the very artificial uh, sharpness you can see a very artificial sharpness to all the edges i'm going to just get rid of that something like 53 54 maybe or 55 no, 55 looks too much 54 looks good to me now this looks much more pleasant to the eye you see this is what we had before and this does not look like a very soft film camera. Now, if I do this, this looks much more approachable. Very nice. So now let's come to the vignette because every part of this footage is very bright. We don't want our uh, viewer to look at every part of the frame and not focus on our face. So I'm going to go into the power window, create a circular power window, make it big and uh, increase the softness even more. I'll probably shift it a little bit towards the right because my face is a little bit skewed towards the right and right over here I'm going to invert it and decrease the offset or gain whatever you want you can do that but yeah I think cool like this is before this is after now our eyes are much more directed towards my face not yet because the face also the half of my face is also very dark we're going to fix that in the subject node and I'm going to create another circular node. I'm going to make it mostly around my face and my skin. Main point of uh, interest in this footage. And I'll soften it a lot. I'll place it dead center on my face and uh, just do this, rotate it a little bit. And then I'll go to this and increase the gain or maybe just the offset. That way my face is a little bit more lit up. Like this is before and this is after. I think it's a little too much that you have done. So I'll get it back and keep it a little more approachable. 28 looks fine. This is before, this is after. We have more light on this side of the face. Perfect. Now let's go to the gradient part. This is a generally good rule of thumb to add a little gradient at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so again, we are more accustomed to look at the important things. So I'm going to go into power windows again. This is the gradient one and I'm going to reverse it and place it down here and then i'll go into curves or go into offset doesn't really matter i'll bring it down that way you can see this gradient there's a very slight gradient at the bottom of the footage this is before and this is after and again this just looks more more natural to look and uh, actually direct our eyes to what should be directed to now let's go add some density. I don't really think we need much of density because uh, I am very happy with where the skin tones are landing. But let's just try it once. I'm going to go to color space and HSV. I'm going to go to channels, channel one and channel three, turn them off. If you do not understand what I'm doing with color density, I have uploaded a video explaining exactly why do we do this? What is subtractive saturation and what is the problem with the normal saturation wheel that is over here. Go check out that video if you do not understand this. If you have already watched this video, perfect. I'm going to increase the gain and that brings a little more life to our skin tone. That is true, but I don't think I really need that at this point. Let's look at the other parts of the footage. Does that make anything better? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it is good where it is uh, when we don't need this thing. Uh, let's go to qualifier. I think our 
skin tone is perfectly fine in this case. Let's see with the color slice tool. And I think our skin tone is majorly pretty fine. It is lying on the uh, on this uh, skin tone indicator line in the vector scope. So I think we're doing pretty fine with that. Uh, so, okay, cool. We don't really need the qualifier. I think uh, everything looks good. Uh, we can come in and add a little bit of radial blur and uh, tone it down, uh, place the center towards more towards my face and tone it down to like something like 0.22. And this is before, this is after. If you're not able to see it, I'll zoom in. So look at the edges. This is before, everything is sharp. This is after, everything is a little bit rotated and blurred. Now, if you want to add a little bit of glow to it, you can, you can come to glow over here. Everything that I've used so far is absolutely available in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So don't need to worry about that. I'll manage the threshold so things don't shine too much. I think this much shine is perfectly fine. I don't think shine, we don't need much shine anywhere in this shot, but that, that looks good. Okay, cool. Now this film grain is something that I can add over here. This is not available in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, but uh, there's a very easy uh, way to emulate this using an overlay and grain overlay that you can find on Google anywhere. So I'm going to take film grain and add a very slight bit of 16mm archival print. There's a very slight grain. I don't know if you can see it on YouTube after the compression, but it just adds a little more mm, to the shot and makes it look more cinematic. So this is what we started with and this is where we are at now. Pretty amazing, I will say. And if you have the uh, premium version, that is the DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can do even more. You can do face refinement. It's called face refinement. I'll bring it over here. And what this will do is to detect a face in my frame, and then it will track the face all the way throughout the video, along with the facial features, my eyes, my mouth, my nose, my skin, my forehead and everything. And later on, I can make changes to the specific features. I'll show you how. I basically want my other eye to be a little more bright because it is very dark. I'll get the overlay off and uh, somewhere where the eye is very pretty bright and uh, cool. This is, I think, where I need a little more light on this side of the face. So skin isolation, we don't really need much. Skin texture, again, you can add more texture, less texture. You can do all those things over here. Not really my thing, but yeah, side lighting, I don't want that. You can have like side lighting, like this is the right side of the face, right? I can add a little more gamma to the right side of the face. Then it will add a little more light to that side. See, it is adding a little more light to the right eye in this particular frame. And I think that is good. I'll uh, adjust the gamma back to normal, but I'll add a little bit of gain. Uh, not too much though. It's just a slight bit of gain. And I think that looks good enough. Area softness, I'll increase the softness so that it doesn't show much. And then in eyes, I can add a little more sharpening because uh, our eyes as the audience generally look at the person's eyes. So if you add a little more sharpness, they're easier to look at, they're easier to connect to. And uh, that will be perfect. Brightening, I don't really want much brightening, just a slight bit. I'll zoom in actually, you'll be able to see more. Just a little bit of brightness, you see, if I bring it too much, it's, it looks bad. Uh, but yeah, that much is fine. Eye light, I don't really need much. I'll just keep it where it is. Eye bag removal, do I have eye bags? I do have eye bags. So I can remove eye bags as well, but I'll just keep them there. It shows, it is a testament to my hard work and the long nights. Perfect. So I think this is where we are at and uh, this is what we started with. And uh, I am pretty impressed of how much we can do with just a smartphone footage. If you are shooting videos, if you are a content creator who do not have a camera, use your smartphone and use the power of color grading to make it come to life, to make it look that much more amazing. But do let me know if you need more color grading tutorials of phone footages instead of the camera footages that I do. If I get enough comments, I'll make more tutorials on grading phone footages. I hope you learned something. I hope we all can make better videos, learn better colors and tell better stories. And I'll see you in the next one.